you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. So we've discussed several different aspects of planning and design for Wi-Fi within your environment. We talked about considering the physical space, considering the objects in the space and what they're made of. We also talked about powering the devices as well as establishing network connectivity to them. The last thing that we want to talk about is AP orientation. Now this is related to how we're going to actually mount the AP and if we do it incorrectly, we can negate all of the previous considerations that we've made. If you have an AP with incorrect orientation in your environment, you may be thinking that it's providing coverage to an area that it isn't. What we're displaying on the left-hand side of the screen are AP antenna patterns for both our indoor and outdoor APs. My goal here is not to make you an expert in reading antenna charts. However, do know that most AP providers provide this information for their AP radios. First, we're going to focus on the orange circles provided in the azimuth view. And to help us visualize this, let's go ahead and bring in an image of the AP over top of that view. Now that we've done that, we can see that this is a top-down view. If we were to place the AP flat on a table, serial number side down, and stand over it and look down at it, this is the view that we'd have. So what the orange line is telling us in the azimuth view is that we're emitting a 360 degree radio pattern around the AP. You'll notice that under each AP's azimuth view, there are actually two different antenna patterns. These are representing the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios. And really, in this case, they're not much different. So for this discussion, we're not going to focus on the differentiation between the two. Moving on to the elevation view, you can see that the orange line pattern here is quite different. When we overlay the AP image in this view, we can quickly see that this is a side view of the radio coverage. In the elevation view, we can tell that we really don't have 360 degree coverage. Most of the coverage that's being provided is above the AP, while below the AP exists very little coverage. We can see that there is a little bit of an orange line poking out beneath the AP here, but this is what we're considering incidental coverage. This isn't a problem, the APs were designed this way, but it's why we say that the orientation matters. In the case of the R320, it can be wall mounted, ceiling mounted, or placed on a tabletop surface. But you have to understand where the coverage is going to go. I have an R320 right here. If I were going to set this on a table, I would have coverage up here, but not so much below where the AP is sitting. If I were to mount this on a wall, I would have coverage on this side of the AP, but not so much on this side of the AP. If I were going to mount it on the ceiling, I would have coverage emanating down, but not so much the other way. We did talk about how the APs have incidental coverage that come from behind them, but that shouldn't be relied on as primary coverage. And as you can tell by the antenna patterns, the same is kind of true with the outdoor APs as well. There are some additional mounting options for the outdoor AP, like pole mounting using a pole mount kit. So just like the wall, you can imagine, depending on how you mount the AP to the pole, on one side of the pole you would have coverage, whereas you would have incidental coverage on the other side. Mm -hmm.